Well, good afternoon, everybody. It is Wednesday, July the 7th, 2021. I'm the Reverend Dr. Mary Biedrin from North Congregational Church. You may hear some cracks of thunder because we've got something really big blowing in as I am doing this live stream of Wednesday Inspiration, but hopefully the power will hold out. We've been thinking about the names of God throughout July, and today we come to another one that occurs several thousand times in the Bible, Elohim. It is another plural name for God, just like Adonai, which is, as we discussed before, interesting because it is not just in the New Testament with Father, Son, and Spirit, but also throughout the Bible that God is somehow plural, that God encompasses everything. And where does God encompass everything more than in the act of creation? <clears throat> so I want to read to you from the message translation by Eugene Peterson, a contemporary translation of the Bible. And as always, different translations give us different things to think about. From Genesis 1, so we are back at the very beginning of the Bible and the first use of the word Elohim for God the very beginning of this story. And so think of God and God in creation as the plurality that God is and how it is expressed in this story. And then we'll think about it a little more. First this, God created the heavens and earth, all you see, all you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness, a bottomless emptiness, an inky blackness. God's spirit brooded like a bird above the watery abyss. God spoke, light, and light appeared. God saw that the light was good and separated light from dark. God named the light day. He named the dark night. It was evening. It was morning. Day one. God spoke, sky, in the middle of the water, separate water from water. God made sky. He separated the water under sky from the water above sky, and there it was. He named sky the heavens. It was evening. It was morning. Day two. God spoke, separate. Water beneath heaven, gather into one place. Land, appear. And there it was. God named the land earth. He named the pooled water ocean. God saw that it was good. God spoke, earth, green up. Grow all varieties of seed-bearing plants, every sort of fruit-bearing tree. And there it was, earth produced green seed-bearing plants, all varieties, and fruit-bearing trees of all sorts. God saw that it was good. It was evening. It was morning. Day three. God spoke, lights come out, shine in heaven's sky, separate day from night. Mark seasons and days and years, lights in heaven's sky to give light to earth. And there it was. God made two big lights, the larger to take charge of day and the smaller to be in charge of night. And he made the stars. God placed them in the heavenly sky to light up earth and oversee day and night, to separate light and dark. God saw that it was good. It was evening. It was morning. Day four. God spoke, swarm, ocean, with fish and all sea life. Birds fly through the sky over earth. God created the huge whales, all the swarm of life in the waters, and every kind of species of flying birds. God saw that it was good. God blessed them. Prosper, reproduce, fill ocean. Birds reproduce on earth. It was evening. It was morning. Day five. God spoke, earth generate life, every sort and kind, C cattle and reptiles and wild animals, all birds. And there it was, wild animals of every kind cattle of all kinds, every sort of reptile and bug. God saw that it was good. God spoke, let us make human beings in our in image, make them reflecting our nature, so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself, every animal that moves on the face of the earth. God created human beings. He created them godlike, reflecting God's nature. He created the male and female. God blessed them. Prosper, reproduce, fill earth, take charge. Be responsible for fish in the sea and birds in the air and for every living thing that moves on the face of the earth. Then God said, I've given you every sort of seed-bearing plant on earth, every kind of fruit-bearing tree given to you for food. 
To all animals and all birds, everything that moves and breathes, I give whatever grows out of the ground for food. And there it was. God looked out over everything he had made. It was so good, so very good. It was evening. It was morning. Day six. Heaven and earth were finished down to the last detail. By the seventh day, God had finished his work. On the seventh day, he rested from all his work. God blessed the seventh day. He made it a holy day. Because on that day, he rested from his work, all the creating that God had done. This is the story of how it all started, of heaven and earth, when they were created. So this is the story of Elohim, the God who is the creator, the God who is the judge. And here in this story, we have both of those things happening together, put together into one thing. God creating, God bringing forth things, God commanding things to be brought forth, and then God declaring everything, all of it, good, so very good. God blessed the creation. God blessed the animals. God blessed the plants, the day, the night, all of creation. And God declared that it was so good, so very good. And God made people and declared they were good too. So this is important because Genesis 2 has another creation story with slightly different aspect to it. But the very first thing in the Bible is Elohim, God, the creator, the judge, creating and judging it good, and judging it with the ownership, with the authority of the creator, and creating with the foresight, with the knowledge of the judge, all of these things. God, the plural, creating man and woman in God's image, both of them equal, and giving them the image of God that they bore. Now, a lot of people want to make the Bible into a history book or a geology book or something like that, and I just want to say to you that's a misuse of the Bible. So the Bible is revelation to us. It's revelation about the story, about how things came into being, how God could create everything, how it could be declared good, and then the long story of how it ended up turning out not to be good, how it went bad, and the even longer story that takes this whole great big volume about how God brought it back around again to the goodness that we see at the end of Revelation, and I'll be preaching on that later on in August. Right now, though, I want us to think about us being made in God's image and declared good. Because the real point of this story is to say God's judgment has never changed about us. God sees the goodness in us even when we do not see it in ourselves. God sees the goodness in the world and the created order even when we cannot perceive its goodness. God sees light and darkness both as good. God sees all creatures as good. In God's judgment, the world is good. And as we have fallen away, as we struggle, as we don't see ourselves as good, as we have trouble living up to our own goodness, God, creator God, God the judge, God the wise, God the loving, is ready to bring us back with the power of the creator, with the judgment of the judge, that we at our very being, as we are created in God's image, are good. So how would that affect how you might live this day, just this very day, to look around you and say everything is good, to look around and say it was all created to be good, to look in the mirror and see yourself and say, I have been proclaimed good by God, the creator and judge of the universe. I think that's a powerful thing. That's so much more powerful than saying, well, the earth has to have been made in exactly seven days. The power of this story is the goodness of all creation, the goodness and the sweetness of life, the beauty of it, the idea that we were made to reflect God back to God. We were made for relationship with God and with one another. And so I'm going to play for you Pat Butler on the North Church organ playing Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of Creation. While it's playing, I hope you will think about this creation and this judgment, the creation, the creative power, this wasn't just an accident. There is a sense of intelligence behind it. But even more importantly, there is a sense of intelligence in the judgment that all that is is good. 
and in the understanding that we can find ourselves back in goodness. And so here, praise to the Lord, praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation, and then we'll be back for a time of prayer. My favorite hymns, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of Creation. And it's such a favorite hymn that from our old, old, old pilgrim hymnal that still has some of the, the beautiful things that many of us have grown up with, I am going to pray with you the words to this hymn. Pray to Elohim, to the God of creation, to the God who judges us and declares us good, to the God who has loved us enough to seek our redemption throughout the whole long story of all creation. Let us pray. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O my soul, praise him, for he is thy health and salvation. All ye who hear, now to his temple draw near, join me in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord, who o'er all things so wondrously reigneth, Shelters thee under his wings, yea, so gently sustaineth. Hast thou not seen how thy desires e'er have been, granted in what he ordaineth? Praise to the Lord who doth prosper thy work and defend thee. Surely his goodness and mercy here daily attend thee. 
Ponder anew what the Almighty can do if with his love he befriend thee. Praise to the Lord. O oh, let all that is in me adore him. All that hath life and breath come now with praises before him. Let the Amen sound from his people again. Gladly, for A, we adore him. And now join me in adoration and in love, in thanksgiving to God for all that God has done for us as we pray what Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I hope and pray that the God of all creation, the God who has created us, the God who encompasses all kinds of beings, the plural God who is many and who is one, will live with you, will abide with you, will walk with you, and that you will remember that you and I and all of creation have been judged by God with love, have been judged good. So let that goodness come forth. And if you have fallen away from that goodness, let that, that goodness come back. Open your hearts to what God is doing in this world. And may you be surrounded with God's love all this week. I'll be back next week with a recorded version. And the next two Sundays, we'll have special guest speakers. I hope that you will tune in for all of these things. Meanwhile, God be with you till we meet again. <music>